What's up, y'all? I am so excited to be talking to you about some creative ways that I have for defeating that reading slump. Videos on how to get rid of a reading slump are fairly well known on booktube, but I have also noticed that I'm seeing a lot of the same kinds of things being recommended for getting out of a slump. And a lot of those tips and tricks don't necessarily work for me personally, so I figured, okay, if these things aren't working for me, maybe they aren't working for others, and therefore I should try to make a recommendations video on things that you can do to escape that reading slump. That have worked for me personally. And in this video, I'm going to have a little guest star that is none other than my Belgian Shepherd, Akasha, who is going to be walking through some of these tips and tricks that I have, just so that we can have a visual aid so that y'all can see exactly how these are going to work. All right, y'all, let's get started on the seven most creative ways to escape a reading slump. Those of you who have clicked on this video and have absolutely no idea what a reading slump is, because I know I didn't before I joined booktube, a reading slump essentially is when you just, you want to read the, the spirit is willing, but the body is not situation. You really want to be in the mood for books, but nothing is calling to you and you just don't have the attention span. You're excited about the concept of reading, but you're not excited about the act of actually sitting down to read. Or even worse, you sit down to read, you make time and you open the book and right away your interest just goes down. You're distracted, you're thinking about other things. Another way that a reading slump can come about is like, yo, you read an incredible book, right? And you have that book hangover. You read a book that changes your life, it rocks your world, it blows your socks to the other side of the universe. What? And after that, everything is mediocre. How do you go on after reading a book like that? I know that was my experience when I read The Poppy War and also when I read Beasts of Prey. Those were books that really, really impressed me to the point where nothing else was of interest because they were just so wow and nothing compared. Nothing compares, nothing compares to you. You're perfect and I hope you never die. Mwah. The book that put me in the biggest reading slump was After the Flood by Cassandra Montague, which is this post-apocalyptic survival story, and it was so brilliant and gory and sad and brutal, and it filled my entire heart. It filled my entire heart in a way that a romantic partner has never been able to achieve. And after that, I was like, okay, the, the, there is nothing left to read in this world. Nothing can, can follow up After the Flood. And I did a whole a whole bunch of things to try and get myself out of that slump. I watched a shit ton of booktube videos on how to escape a reading slump. And while those videos were awesome, right? They were so well made, they were dope, they were made by creators that I really, really like and respect and also some creators that were entirely new to me. Those tips and tricks just didn't work and I was seeing a lot of the same things recommended that unfortunately for me personally didn't work. Do y'all actually want to see a video on books that put me in a reading slump? They would be both good, you know, books that were good and books that were bad. If you do, comment down below and if enough of you say that you want to see that video, I will certainly make it happen for y'all. And I also have to give a really big quick shout out to the patrons because I put up on the Patreon a list of video ideas that I had and y'all voted for this video in particular, like it won by a landslide. So I love making the content that y'all actually want to see. So thank you for being a part of the Patreon. Now the first tip that I have for escaping a reading slump is to get on your butt and do a spa day. Do a day where you are just pampering yourself. I'm talking about rest. I'm talking about relaxation. I'm talking about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. I don't know why. I'm sorry. That whole cadence made that song start playing. Oh my god, comment if you're old enough to remember that song. Awkward moment. Now this does not mean that you have to go out and spend a whole bunch of money because that just like is not accessible. I know damn well I don't have money like that. So when I'm doing my home spa day, I will sit down, I will put my tub, my what? I'll put my feet in a tub of water, I'll soak and then I'll use a pumice stone, take care of my feet, 
I will paint my toenails. I have this homemade tool. It is basically a sock that is filled with rice and I've tied it off at the top end and I've put essential oils in it and I can stick it in the microwave for like 30 seconds to a minute, put it on my shoulders and sit back and relax. I also have an at-home massager. It was like 30 bucks. It's something that like straps to the back of your chair. You can just lean back on it and it needs your shoulders and your neck and I'll just watch Bob's Burgers because y'all know that's my comfort TV show. It's all about that act of just slowing down whether it's a bath, whether it is meditation, whether it's doing yoga at home and doing that for as long as you possibly can to relax your body. When you allow your body to get into that state of relaxation, you're gonna automatically wanna book because you've brought your baseline anxiety down, right? The thing that's kind of keeping you from being able to sit down and enjoy that book, it is literally gonna help you so much because a lot, a lot, a lot that. Like, Jesse, are you good? Are we not gonna talk about what just happened? A lot of the time when we're in a reading slump, it's because we're anxious. It's because we can't focus on what we wanna do. And so kind of literally forcing yourself to sit back and relax and practicing that for hours, preferably for a full day, preferably for a few days, is going to put you in the mindset where you can sit down and just enjoy something for an hour on end. Now, the second tip that I have is kind of wacky. Just hear me out. That tip is none other than to stop yourself from reading anything. I'm talking about signs. I'm talking about, look, but don't crash your car. Okay, don't, don't crash your car. I'm talking about labels, right? Stop yourself. When you catch yourself reading something, just don't. And obvious, don't endanger your life. Like if you have food allergies, don't go to the store and just not pay attention to the labels. But you will not believe how often we actually just stop in our everyday lives and read something. We'll read an advertisement on a building. We will read a flyer. We spend so much time scanning and reading things without realizing that we're reading. And if you are very conscientious about reading absolutely nothing and you deprive yourself of all of that time that you spend actually reading things that aren't a book, it's gonna make you want to read a book. You're gonna be like, okay, okay, I've, I've been challenging myself by not reading reading a single thing that I see out in the wild. You can tell that I'm a city slicker because I just compared seeing signs in civilization to being out in the wild. What? With every day that passes, I'm beginning to understand why my father abandoned me as a child. And now I, because I've been forcing myself not to do that, I really, really want to engage in actually getting to read something. This is something that I absolutely love to do and I like to do it on days when I have to be out and about because I can do it, if I'm going to a restaurant, I can do it uh, for the menu. I have to be like, okay, I'm not gonna look at the menu. I'm just gonna order a burger or whatever. And it's really fun if you go to coffee shops and you like to try different things and you have to come up with your own latte or whatever. Yes, I would like to order a supercalifragilistic expialidocious. Mind you, like, don't irritate your server. Don't irritate your barista. They already have enough going on. Stacy's mom has got it going on. She's all I want. So obviously be like respectful of this and also practice safety. It's just, it's super fun, especially if you're picking a movie, like you're going through Netflix. You can either just pick something at random or you can kind of just scroll through and look at the photos and try really, really hard not to read the titles on the movie or the synopsis. You can skip the synopsis, but just go off of like the preview or the thumbnail image of the film. It's really fun. This is something that has actually worked for me. I think I practiced not reading, the longest that I've practiced not reading absolutely anything, I think was two days. And when I'm telling you, I craved a book harder than I've craved anything in my entire life. It was like water in the desert. It was so good. It was like, by the time I finally started reading, the book the book could do no wrong because I just missed the activity of reading so badly. Tip number three is to watch book to movie adaptations of books that you want to read and or books that you never will. Many, many, many. So many of us are very, very, very against watching the movie or the television show first, right? We want to experience the original source material the way that the author intended before checking out the adaptation. A lot of us are like that. You guys hear that sound? What is that sound? I feel like aliens are about to beam me up into space. 
Okay, I think someone's using a weed whacker and it's kind of creeping me out. We're just gonna power through this. What was I saying before the aliens invaded? So a good way to get around this is just watch things that you know have been adapted where you're not interested in reading the book at all and just knowing that this comes from a book. You're already putting yourself into that that state of like, okay, I wonder how this would have played out on page, that kind of thing. And it might get you excited about reading the original book, especially if you are one of those people who don't mind watching the movie or the TV show first first before going into a book, I guarantee you it's going to make you more excited about reading the book so long as it's, you know, good. Hey, maybe it'll turn you off to the book entirely. Or maybe through that process you'll find out what you're actually in the mood to read. Another tip that I have is looking up fan art. Now this is going to be especially relevant for my fantasy readers, my science fiction readers. There is so many fan art websites and you know pieces of fan art that are floating around Twitter and Instagram for various fandoms and they are so absolutely beautiful and even if you are not familiar with the particular world that the fan art is centering it's going to just stimulate your brain and it's going to get you curious about fantasy in general but hopefully that book specifically and you can also just look up fan art from books that you've already read and loved and might not necessarily be interested in rereading again but through the act of checking out that fan art you might actually be like, ooh, okay, I'm in the mood for a different fantasy now. And you can also explore with the type of fan art, different kinds of setting. Oh my God, not the airplane. Can we pretend that airplanes in the night sky are like shooting stars? I could really use a wish right now, a wish right now, a wish right now. why is so much happening at all times and it's so easy to go down rabbit holes of fan art especially if there are threads associated with it and you can see you get to scroll down and see how people are interacting with this art their reactions to it that kind of thing i know that fan art will definitely get me in the mood to read especially fantasy but fan art doesn't necessarily have to be about fantasy and science fiction one thing that i've noticed is really popular now because of book talk and bookstagram are mood videos vision boards for books. Rather, they're like the book aesthetic. Olivia of Stories for Coffee is really good at this. Here are some examples of what I mean using The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which is ironic because I think the book absolutely sucks, but the aesthetics are on point. Celebrities, outfits, homes, environments, that kind of thing that kind of encapsulate the world of the book itself. It can be literature, it can be fantasy, mood boards, that kind of thing. And it will just get you into the aesthetic of reading that particular book. My next suggestion is to watch TV shows and movies that center reading or that have reading themes. Now there are actually like a lot of TV shows and movies where the character, the main characters are, are big readers or they're set in a library. You can definitely get creative about this. It absolutely needs to be a movie or TV shows where you're constantly seeing books in the setting. Extra bonus points if the protagonists are constantly discussing books. As human beings, we are so sensitive to our environment and we're also, a lot of us are visual creatures. It was completely silent in my neighborhood before I started filming. This is something that works really, really well for me personally because I am a very visual entity. I am definitely heavily influenced by the things that I see, especially as somebody who lives with synesthesia. So things that are visually stimulating will definitely just sink right into the core of my brain and help me creatively. And I'm telling you the times when I'm seeing a main character who's really into books, especially if they're always carrying a book or spending a lot of time around books, it makes me want to stop whatever the hell I am looking at and just go get a book myself. And so if you are like me in that regard, I think watching bookish TV shows and movies will absolutely be something that is going to work for you. Here are some additional tricks from Akasha the Malinois. One of the tricks is to dress the part. When Akasha is in a reading slump and just cannot decide what her next read is, she gets into the aesthetic of a reader. Now everyone's idea of what a reader as 
aesthetic differs. But for Akasha, she likes to dress up in berets. Berets really make her feel bookish. They say, yas, what is she reading? She also is extremely partial to scarves and she likes to get all dressed up and make reading an event, make some tea or coffee, hey why not both, and sit down and read. She's just gotten ready to read so of course she's gonna do the work, you know? Another thing that Akasha really really recommends is to rearrange your home library. Akasha recently realized that a part of the reason she's in a reading slump is because her shelves aren't organized in a way that easily allows her to identify what kind of books she wants to read, so she recently went through and instead of organizing her shelves by author last name and genre, she organized them by vibes and used specific placards in order to label the types of books on that particular shelf. Akasha has an entire organization video setting up these cards and organizing these shelves, and if you you want to see it, it is in the description box below. And kind of going along with that, another thing that I highly recommend is to go into an indie bookstore and talk to the people there about their favorite book. Ask them about what they've been reading. Ask them about a book that they read recently that they didn't like, that they did like. And ask them about their favorite authors, especially if you know that you haven't heard of, of them. If the store isn't busy and if the person is like willing to hang out and talk with you for a little bit. Like I know that that is the reason why so many of us are interested in working in bookstores is so that we get to talk to people about books. Personally, I just find it so stimulating to listen to somebody else talk about books. I mean, that's why I'm on booktube, right? That's literally why we are here. And that's a tip that I see recommended so much in these videos about reading slumps is to watch booktube, watch people talk about books. If you're taking the time to go into a bookish setting and actually talking to someone one-on-one, -on -one, especially if the book is there in question and they lead you to it, that might be a magical moment for you to pick up the book. It might be clandestine, you know what I'm saying? And I specify indie bookstores specifically, not just because it is so, so important to be supporting indie bookstores, but because a lot of times these indie bookstores will have books that you just did not know about and you probably wouldn't know about. A really good thing to do would be to ask specifically for unpopular books, right? Ask them what is an obscure piece of fiction that they have read recently and really enjoyed. Or you could make sure that you are going to this bookstore and perusing the shelves for books that you have specifically never ever seen before. I just did this with Pango. I went on Pango and I just scrolled and I read various synopsises for books and I ended up picking up a book, buying a book that I'd never heard of. I hadn't heard a single person talk about it. I'd never seen the cover. I've never heard of the author and I'm so freaking excited to read the book. Because why the hell not? I am going to actually unbox it right now because I haven't done it. And for those of you who aren't familiar, Pango is a online book selling platform where you can buy and sell used books. Okay, that's right. See, the book is called Mayflies and it's by Andrew O'Hagan and this is the cover. And I was scrolling down the Pango app and I was just like, wow, this looks really, really intriguing. It looks really interesting. Especially when you're ordering a book that you haven't heard anything about, you're even more excited about it because you're like, oh my god, I literally don't know what I'm getting. This is set in the summer of 1986. We're following James and Tully who ignite a friendship based off of music, films, and a rebel spirit. With school over, they rush toward a magical weekend of youthful excess in Manchester. I did look this up on Goodreads before purchasing it and everybody was raving about it. That's a really good way to get yourself excited about books. And this is not sponsored by Pango, but in the bottom of my description. My little used bookstore is linked down below along with a discount code. If you use the code BOWTIES5 and get $5 off your first order on Pango. So that is there if you want to use it. And the final suggestion that I have for escaping that reading slump is to phone or meet up with a friend and have them gush about the last book that they read. Extra bonus points if it is a friend who's like not super into reading or a friend you haven't spoken to in a while or a friend that has a different reading taste from you. And this tip works for me because you're covering a lot of bases. You have going to get a stranger's book recommendation and then you also have getting a book recommendation from somebody that you know in real life. And I feel like it just boils down to psychology. The act of talking, especially in person, about reading 
is just going to make you want to read. Personally, I think your success rate at escaping that reading slump of crawling your way out of it, I think the more of them that you combine, the more effective that they will be, especially if you are really consistent about it. You're, do, you're practicing these things for over a week. I wouldn't recommend just like doing them for one to two days and then expecting that reading slump to disappear. I think it's something that you're going to have to work towards a little bit. And then when you finally do get to pick up that book, it is going to be so much more freaking rewarding. So those officially are my seven tips that I think are creative ways to escape a reading slump. But another thing that I like to do when I am in a reading slump and I just like can't figure out what I want to read, it's just being indecisive. I like to pick up a bunch of books, pick up a bunch of books at random from my shelves and then just read a chapter of each or I'll read it until I get bored. So if that's three pages, then I read three pages of the book, put it back on a shelf, get a different book. And that act of just jumping around and exploring different writing styles and, and jumping in and out of stories kind of helps me decide what is sticking with me or if I'm still in a reading slump I'm like okay well at least I spent three minutes reading today and that's good enough for me. Sometimes you just need to be in your slump and it's okay. We are a society that is pushing being productive and even if it is just reading a book and finishing that book and having an accomplishment. There is nothing wrong with starting and not finishing like a thousand books. I know that it's not satisfying but I firmly believe in just being where you're at especially on booktube and in bookstagram and on book talk there is so much pressure to just read all the books and I think a big part of the reason that a lot of us fall into reading slumps is because of that pressure because book reading becomes this thing that is about numbers and the amount of consumption versus just the simple act of loving literature and also it's so important to remember that sometimes we're in a reading slump because we are depressed we are anxious or other factors that have nothing to do with reading itself again just be where you're at sure push yourself try and get back to doing what you love be gentle with yourself forgive yourself if you're not in the mood to read that's okay it doesn't mean that you're a bad reader i mean i i went several years without reading when i was in college because i just didn't have the energy or the capacity to do anything but read for my courses do these tips and tricks but be easy on yourself and and if at any point in time during this process you find it stressful, that's when you need to stop. The key word here is stress. Is it stressful for me to be practicing trying to get out of this reading slump? If it's stressful, just stop. Don't force it. But I think the inverse is also true. If it is stressful for you to be in the slump, then I think, yeah, sure, double down on these tips and tricks and try to get yourself out of that slump so that you can alleviate that stress. And, and now there's a freaking siren, so I'm gonna wrap this video up. Thank you again to my beautiful patrons for supporting my channel and for voting for this video. If you want to join my Patreon, the link to do so is in the description box below. Stay safe, be good to yourselves, be good to others, and I can't wait to see you in my next video.